Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me on day 83 in this podcast with the Bible through the year. My name is Leo Lozano, Associate Pastor here at Revive GMC in Pasadena, Texas. Today, we're going to wrap up Matthew 19. We'll be reading from the verse 16 forward. I am reading from the New Living Translation, but you may join me from whatever translation you have before you. The important thing is, here we are, one more day, making the time to spend a few minutes in the Word of God. And my prayer is that throughout the day, we can spend a few minutes meditating on the Word of God right? Enjoying the Word of God and creating the space for the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts, right? And so let's do that. Let's go to the Bible together. Someone came to Jesus with this question, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. But to answer your question, If you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. I have obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? Jesus told him, If you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Then Peter said to him, We have given up everything to follow you. What will we get? Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits up his glorious throne, you who have been my followers will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be least important then, and those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At first, it it gets my attention then when Jesus mentions what commandments you must follow. He speaks of those commandments only that affect the people around us. He doesn't mention any of the commandments that has to do with our relationship with God. He only mentions those, again, that affect those around us, you know, your neighbor. And yet, this person that came to God, you know, we know that this is a rich man, right? Jesus points that out. And... I don't know, but this is what I feel. I don't know if if this is exactly what went through his head or not, but he had everything, everything in this world, right? He had riches. He's well-positioned, right? He has everything he needs. Not only that, he has the respect of the people or he has, you know, know, he, yeah, yeah, he must be well-respected in his community. He has everything he needs, connections and money and possessions and trips and luxury and you name it. And yet, yeah, there's something in him that, that makes him say, yeah, there's something else. There's something else out there that I do not have. Like this cannot be all because this does not satisfy And that's why he comes to Jesus. And that's why he asks the question. But when he gets the answer, he's thorn. Because basically Jesus tells him, 
you have to get rid of everything that you value. You have to get rid of everything that makes you who you are. Because I'm pretty sure his identity is wrapped up in all of that. In his name, his possession, his status. And Jesus is telling him, you have to lose all of it. If you want to, you know, get this other thing that you're, that you're desperately in need of. That you know your soul craves. And sadly, he can't do it, right? He can't. But then, you know, Peter asks Jesus a fair question. What about us? I mean, I'm not rich, but I gave up everything. Gave up the business. I gave up, you know, my lifestyle. I, I even gave up the comfort of my, you know, my life, my wife. Like, I, we, we, we gave it up all. So what, what about us? And I love the answer from Jesus. It's like, it's okay. Your sacrifice is worth it. It's completely worth it. And you'll see. And, and I just trust that. Following Jesus is not easy. But I know there's nothing like it. Nothing on earth can, can fill our hearts the way he can fill our hearts. And it doesn't matter how much we give up here on earth. Once, once we arrive on the other side of this journey, we will all say, oh yeah, this was so worth it. And so never lose that. Never lose sight of that. Thank you for joining me today and I cannot wait to meet you again tomorrow. God bless you.